reading through the Revelation, the message to the church in Thyatira, starting with verse 18 of Revelation chapter 2. Write this letter, this message, to the angel of the church in Thyatira. This is the message from the Son of God, whose eyes are like flames of fire, piercing to the very depths of the soul, whose feet are like polished bronze, who finds in himself stability and security. There were many trade guilds, what we would call today maybe like trade unions, in this city of Thyatira. And they had a mix of not only probably business meetings or informational meetings, but they would mix their trade guilds, activities, and rituals with the worship in their town of pagan gods. And so if you wanted to be a part of a trade guild or a trade union, you had to participate in these rituals to these pagan gods. If you did not accept this as part of your entrance into this trade guild or trade union, you could be kicked out. And what would happen if you weren't a part of this trade guild? Let's say it's carpentry trade guild. Uh, people wouldn't give you business in the city. You would find that your income would be going down steadily because of your ethics and your faith in Christ. And so these trade guilds were an important part of the city and a part of its commercial uh, endeavors. But people of faith had to decide, am I going to stand up for my ethics, for my values, for my Christian beliefs? Or am I going to compromise so my income can feed and clothe my family? And probably heavy issues of the day, but still issues of our day. Uh, we have to uh, learn to say, I'm going to stand for my faith no matter what it costs me. So it was very tempting of Christians to adapt their principles and their ethics to the world around them so that they can make a living. And so this letter has some words to say to the church that is in a town that has this issue and this pressure. Verse 19, I know all the things you do. I have seen your love, your faith, and your service, and your patient endurance, all good qualities of a Christian. Love, faith, service, and patient endurance. And I can see your constant improvement in all these things. Wouldn't that be a good uh, character trait? When somebody sees us and say, man, I can really see you're constantly growing in your spiritual journey. You're making progress. And for that, we praise the Lord, you know. So these were some good character traits, some good comments that Jesus had for the Christians in this church, in this town of Thyatira. Verse 20. But I have this complaint against you. You are permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. Again, an Old Testament reference to Jezebel and her kingly husband. Uh, Jezebel was a person that was not a good character in the Old Testament. The Jezebel who calls herself a prophet, he doesn't name her name, but they know who she is when he says she is like Jezebel. To lead my servants astray, she teaches them to commit sexual sin and to eat food offered to idols. And this was an important thing that they had to learn to abstain from. Uh, compromising their faith and eating meat that was offered to idols and committing sexual immorality. Matter of fact, in the book of Acts, they had a whole conference about it. And it came out that, listen, one thing we need to tell other Christians is not to compromise their faith by eating the meat of other idols, pagan idols, but we also need to have sexual morality and purity. So he says, verse 21, I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, verse 22, I will throw her on a bed of suffering, and those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from their evil deeds. I will strike her children dead, those are her followers. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts 
and the intentions of every person. This is the sword of the Spirit. This is the word of truth. This is the word of God. It searches out the thoughts and the intentions of every person. And I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. I don't want what I deserve. <laughs> I want mercy. I want grace. I don't want what I deserve. I want God's forgiveness and grace. Verse 24. But I also have a message for the rest of you in Thyatira who have not followed this false teaching. Deeper truths, as they like to call them. Depths of Satan, actually. I will ask nothing more of you except that you hold tightly to what you have done until I come. So hang in there. Through the suffering, through the temptation to compromise, hang tough. Verse 26. To all who are victorious, who obey me to the very end, to them I will give authority over all nations. They will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. So what's the choice? The choice is to compromise your faith, your ethics, your morality, and make it easier on yourself and your family, or to stand strong in your allegiance to Christ and Christ alone, and your loyalty to him and him alone, not to compromise. And so here, this is the choice that all of us have to make in our day-to-day -day living for Jesus, whether we compromise or whether we stay true and loyal. This is the choice. Verse 26, obey me, Jesus says in verse 26. Or verse 21, do her immoral acts, compromise. Verse 21, the very end, her immorality, her compromise. So do her compromise or obey me, uh, the one who is accepted, forgiven, loved, freed you from your sins. And so this is the choice that all of us have to make, right? Notice what he says in verse 28. They will have the same authority I received from my Father, and I will also give them the morning star. Now, the morning star means the early star that is the sign of a new dawn, new hope. Now, at the end of the book of the Revelation, we find Jesus is called the morning star. So he gives them himself. And he is the hope of a new day, of a new life. Notice he says here in verse 29, Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. So here we have looked at these churches in chapter 2. Uh, basically half of the seven churches that these messages were sent to, that this letter of the Revelation was sent to. And if we could bottom line the message of all these uh, churches that Jesus was speaking to, the bottom line is, listen, you have one you must serve, and that's Jesus Christ. He's the one that died on the cross for you. He's the one that's loved you from here to eternity. He's the one that has saved you that has released you from your sins, that has given you a new lease on life and life hereafter. So don't compromise your faith in this world to just get along. It is dangerous to compromise your faith, your beliefs, your values, your ethics. Stay true to Jesus in the midst of hard times because in the end, Jesus wins. And in the end, you're victorious because of Jesus. Well, God bless you and God keep you.